Here are 10 animals who got done dirty by evolution. Number 10, Fiddler Crabs. Fiddler crab gets its name from the motion that males make with their oversized claw during the mating ritual. The fiddler crab is one of over a hundred species of crabs that live on both land and sea, most often found along the intertidal areas of lagoons and mudflats. They can also be found on sandy beaches. So, what's this that separates them from the rest or rightly places them in my list today? If you can remember very well, I mentioned not a while ago that male fiddler crabs have one giant barrette claw whose only purpose is to get a female's attention. Female fiddler crabs choose their mates based on who has the biggest claw. Sounds familiar? Anyways, they choose the one with the biggest claw so they can pass the best genes to her clutch of eggs. The problem here is that this is literally the only thing these claws is good for. Because the claw is too big to pick up food, the male fiddler crab can only feed himself with that smaller claw. That massive claw is actually a disability. That means that the males either eat half the food or take twice as long as the females. The only problem with that is that these crabs only eat during low tide, and the longer the crab spends eating, the more likely they are to end up dead as a meal for a hungry human. All that just to find a mate. Number 9. Luna Moths Yeah, um, these moths can't eat. Evolution did these moths so dirty that it prevented them from eating. Well, found only in North America, the Luna moth starts out as a very hungry caterpillar. As a caterpillar, they're able to eat, but once the caterpillar builds its cocoon, the insect lives inside for about three weeks before it finally comes out as a moth. And when it becomes a moth, instead of evolving, it ends up not having a mouth nor a digestive tract. The moth comes out more appealing to the eye, beautiful and a sight to behold, but because it can't eat, it dies after a week. <gasps> Number 8. Giraffes This one isn't as bad, but I still wanted to include this one. So, giraffes have long necks. We know they're tall, long, slim, and can pretty much reach most trees in their environment. But, but I know what you're thinking. How do they give birth? Okay, you probably weren't thinking that, but let's just say you were for the sake of the plot. These colorful light poles give birth while standing up. The giraffe's birth canal is 6 feet above the ground, so I'm sure you know what's coming next. The baby giraffe falls 6 feet to the ground, sometimes on its head. I know a couple of people who were born from giraffes. Anyways, it gets worse or perhaps better. Once the baby lands, if it doesn't get up, the mother starts kicking it. This is mainly to keep the baby on his feet immediately because of predators. Number 7. Kiwi Bird Native to the New Zealand, especially the flightless kiwi, is among the most unique birds in the world. In the absence of most large predators, this bird evolved to fill a similar ecological niche as many land mammals elsewhere. A fact reflected by the kiwi's anatomy. It stands out to be one of the oldest types of birds that are still living. Let's not forget that it's also the closest cousin to the elephant birds from Madagascar that went extinct many years ago. You know, the only difference between these two birds is size. The kiwi bird is actually very small compared to its cousin. And somehow, with its small body evolution, forced this bird to lay an egg similar to that of an ostrich? Despite being 60 times smaller, kiwis have to deal with eggs nearly the same size as ostriches, and that's 20% of its body weight, equal to an average woman giving birth to a 40-pound baby with the same equipment. It's such a hell to believe the fact about its egg because it actually rearranges the bird's organs and stretches its ribcage. And what's even worse is this bird is actually defenseless. And that's why they can only survive on islands without predators. Number 6. Sloth These drowsy tree dwellers sleep up to 20 hours a day. And even when they're awake, they barely move at all. In fact, they're incredibly sluggish to a point that algae grows on their fur. And it's a dog-eat-dog -dog world for the sloths. If mama's on the tree with you on the back and then you fall, you won't have to fend for yourself down there to get yourself back because she ain't gonna come down and pick you up. And that's not all. These creatures only poop once a week, and when they do, they'll climb out of the tree and get on the ground to do it. Which results in almost all of sloths' death, mostly being caused by getting clapped on the toilet. Over 50% to be exact. Number 5. Hyena there are definitely a lot of things you might have no idea about these animals. Apart from their disgusting laughter, their scavenging lifestyles, powerful jaws, and strong teeth, what might come to you as a shocker is that female hyenas actually have penises. 
Sometimes, you might really find a hard time differentiating between a male and a female. For starters, females are generally larger and stronger as compared to males, but their penises? High enough females' penises are just not there for nothing, but they actually do serve a very vital role. Their penises are used to give birth to their cubs, and yeah, I know what you're imagining, it is often a painful encounter. To make it even worse, relative to the mother's size, hyenas have to give birth to the largest cubs of any carnivore, and they have to do it through a penis. Good amount of first-time mothers don't even survive this ordeal, because the process involves rupturing and splitting open the pseudo to make it easier for the cubs. But the cubs don't get it easy either, and about 60% of a hyena cubs will suffocate on their way out. Imagine giving birth! Number 4. Babirusa if you can ever imagine that your body part can be the cause of your demise, then this wild pig native to Indonesian islands like Sulawesi will tell you a story. First, these animals are no ordinary pigs and are found largely in swamps and rainforests of Indonesian islands. Babirusas have barrel-shaped bodies balanced on delicate deer-like legs. The most known species of Babirusa is distinguished by its naked body and massive curving tusks. These massive curving tusks are not so ordinary, in that they penetrate out of its snout only to do a complete 180 degrees and turn right back towards its face. If a male doesn't wear this hellish overbite or lose them in a fight, then the tusks will end up growing right back onto its head, penetrating the skull and ultimately piercing the brain. The worst part about all this is that by the time it gets clapped by its own dental plan, the babirusa has probably already had children and therefore passes on its genes to the kids. Number 3. Crocodile Crocs are actually OP, but I'm still adding them on here because I hate crocs. This master of all killers could not miss my list today because of some very interesting stories. One day, Marina Musa Sunyana from Zimbabwe left her two kids under an umbrella at the banks of a river while she went fishing. Suddenly, she heard the screams and saw a huge crocodile holding and pulling the head of one of her kids into the water. She then quickly rushed to the scene, and upon arrival, she pressed on the nostrils of the croc very tightly with her fingers as her other hand freed the kid's head from the monster's jaws, and since the crocodile couldn't fight back, it just bit her a little, leaving a small wound on her. The child was later rushed to a hospital and fully recovered, as did Marina. From the story, you can definitely get the catch. There are only a few weak points on the face of a crocodile that you can hit. You know, I also had no idea that such beasts would actually fear when someone tries to tamper with their nostrils or eyes. Because you know, this is where their memory accumulated over years of evolution. Crocodiles know that their eyes are their most vulnerable spot, which means that if something threatens their eyes, they need to let go of this something as soon as possible and swim somewhere far away. Number 2. Octopus Depending on who you talk to, octopuses are either soulful, sophisticated creatures, or they are the stuff of deep-sea nightmares. Indeed, they're often fictionalized as slimy, eight-armed monsters that lurk in wait of prey, but just get to know them a little better, and you'll find that these cephalopods are, though strange and alien-like to behold, also totally fascinating creatures that evolution actually gave them a fuck for their entire lifetime. Did you know that octopuses' arms have a mind of their own? I know you'll get me wrong on this if you have no idea, but about two-thirds of an octopus's neurons are usually located in its arms. I mean, look at all those arms and the mind each one has. These arms can actually taste, touch, and even act on their own accord without input from the brain. The most interesting bit about octopuses is how the males die after sex. In another instance, the female octopus will usually give up her life just to protect her eggs, both daytime and nighttime, until they hatch. See, no food is involved in the whole process, they just guard and guard until they starve to death. In one study, a deep sea octopus was observed to guard her eggs for almost four and a half years. Number 1. Slugs Slugs are all hermaphrodites, no biggie, right? In some ways, that's an adaptation that's super easy, everyone can mate with everyone, with no pesky civil union or marriage question. But in this case, it can get a little tricky, because how can these creatures be gay? When banana slugs mate, they both insert their penises into each other, but at the end of the deed, occasionally a slug or both slugs simultaneously will chew each other's penis off. Bruh. Why? <laughs> Some researchers think it's a way on how they can separate, and no, the penis doesn't grow back. These two mates end up just having female reproductive organs and carry on. 
Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. And remember, knowledge is power. Knowledge.